Yo guys, so in this video we're gonna go to bluff catching. So it's gonna be three different spots here that we're gonna go to. So the thought process is gonna be pretty similar here, which means how my combo interacts with his bluffing range and his value range. But also we're gonna mix some exploitative concepts here. And in the last spot, I will rate to GTO and not enough exploitative, which means that I did a wrong decision deep into the tournament that cost me a lot of money. Let's jump into it guys. Three, two clubs. You have the another club. Check. Guess he's gonna have king queen offsuit suited jack a king axis and if he has eights he's checking the turn. Ace and river. I don't see any reason to bet. I think. One second. Now we check. Eight point two in. Oh, one second. Uh, yeah, looks like we have exactly what we have there. All right, let's jump straight into it with the first hand. This spot, it was 9 in super, open up with a min rest of 30 blinds, the cutoff flats, and the black hole, so it's 3 or 2 to flop. Flop was king, 5, 5, rainbow, and it goes check check to the cutoff, who bets 2.4 and 7.7, they long fold, and Steven calls. The turn card is a 3 for 2 clubs, and we had a 9 of clubs. It goes check, check, the river is an ace. Then Steven checks to the cutoff, and the cutoff bets. 8.2 and 12.6. What's your thought process here, Steven? Yeah, so it's really important to not just out to fold here because the ace is not that great when you have nines. But the first thought process I always go to when I'm in a river spot is how my range looks. And in this spot, I'm going to probably lead a lot of ace axes. And the reason why I'm going to lead a lot of ace axes is because he's going to have a lot of checkbacks because the majority of his range is going to be like pocket pair or king axes. A majority of my range, if I don't lead my ace axis, it's going to be some king axis. But I'm going to check raise a lot of them on the flop as well. So then majority of my range is going to be queens, jacks, tens, nines type of hands. And what's the best buff catcher? Nines, queens, jacks, tens, what's the best one? I think nines with the nine of clubs especially is really good there. Because we don't interact with bluffing range. It's probably going to bet a lot of queen, jack, jack, ten, queen, ten suited variations and some nine axes as well is going to bet some suited nine eight some suited nine ten jack nine queen nine suited but the nine of clubs is is really good here because it's two clubs on a turn and since we have the nine of clubs we block him from having queen nine of clubs jack nine nine ten of clubs type of fans that is going to barrel on a turn so since we have nine here with the nine of clubs and we don't interact with his uh, bluffing range at all i think we have a really good bluff catcher. That's why I decided to call the river. And he shows up with queen jack high. Well played. Thank you. Ace, uh, days four goes 5.3 and 8 first. Uh, this is a reg. Ace yes. king. Ace king 6 10. Part suited. 9 seconds. He's a, he's a cutoff call. Yeah. yeah. Ace four river 8. Flop flush gets in. Here are 4 clubs. Do, 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 do. Time check here. And ace four he jumps. 19 and 18.7. But, uh, yes, we, uh, yeah, we don't interact with any of the bluffs here. And the second spot we had was Ace Roth in the big blind. The cutoff opens with 28 and a half blinds, 2.1x, and then Steven defended Ace for off suit. The flop comes Ace, King, 6, power suited. We have the Ace for the backdrop flush throw and the 4 for the flop flush throw. Goes check, cutoff bets 1.2 and 5.6. Steven call, turns a 10 for two flush draws. Goes check. Cut off bets 5.3 and 8. Steven Cole. Rivers an 8, completing the flop flush. And you have a 4 of clubs here. Let's check. He bets all in 19.8 and 18.7. What's your thought process here? So, in this spot, that I'm going to ask Daniel, who am I playing against here? Is this a reg? And if the answer is yes, then I'm going to think much more about the GTO concepts. Because now I think we can exploit this guy a little bit as well since it's a reg and it's going to find some bluffs here. So with ace four here, we have to ask ourselves, how does my four interact with his bluffing range? And then it's really important to understand how his uh, opening range looks, which means that we're going to ask ourselves, what's the worst offsuit hands is going to open in the cutoff? And the reason why that is really important is because it's 12 combos of an offsuit hand. And if he bluffs a lot of offsuit hands here, it's going to be a lot of bluffs he can choose from, right? So in this spot, the offsuit variety of his opening range 
it's gonna be like queen nine jack nine which is gonna be the bottom in the cutoff and i think in this spot it's gonna um, probably barrel off these type of combination here the jack nine and queen nine since it's uh, gonna interact with the queen jack which is the straight so he really wants to block these type of hands and i don't think a rag is gonna under bluff in this spot and since we have a four of clubs we block some flushes not that many but the most important thing is the four is not gonna interact with its bluffing range which i mentioned is gonna be a lot of jack nine and queen nine and of course you can pick some other hands as well some pocket pairs of course with a club because this is a very attractive spot for a rag to bluff because it has such a big advantage on this type of board. So because my hand don't interact much with bluffing range and do block some strong hands like I have, like ace, king, ace, ten type of hands, I decided to call here with ace four. Dividend whips over pocket nines with no suits at all. And ace four is good. Let's go. Yeah, boy. Wow, really race on this card? Uh, call, of course. Do spray in the, the board. <sighs> wow. What could you have? It's hard for him to have a full house though. The block 9-8. Wow. He jumps. He jumps. Oh fucking hell. And the last hand we had here was 9-7-2 in the big blind where the small blind limps. 37 by steep here. And we check with the 9-7 of diamonds. The flop comes 7 6 2's rainbow with a backdoor. One checks to Steven, who gets one blind and 2.8. Call. Turns a 5 Badugi, rainbow. Goes check, Steven at 2.4 and 4.9. He check raises to 7.2. Steven call. River is another deuce clearing the board. And the small line jams 28.5 in 19.2. What is your thought process here, bro? Yeah, so this was a tricky spot. It was like six hours into the GG Masters here. Which means we should think about the exploitive concepts here deep into the tournament and not just pure GTO. Because this is a spot where I really think that people might underbluff. The reason why I think people are underbluffing is the concept that we're uncapped here. Remember that we can have 8-9 offsuit. We can even have like pocket, pocket 6s here. We can even have like 4-3. We can have 8-4 eight, eight, for a straight. So we can have a lot of strong hands here. We can even have like 7 deuce off. So in this spot here, 9-7. Even though because I did check it up. This is a pure call in an equilibrium solver, but he has to be really creative to find enough bluffs here. And in this spot, I don't think people are over bluffing. And even in, in an equilibrium solver, it's fighting all the, bl the bluffs he's supposed to have. The EV of calling is pretty, pretty low. And I don't love hero calling when I think people are under bluffing. And I think exploitative wise, this is a spot where people are under bluffing. But I did decide to call here because I was too much GTO and not enough exploitative here. And unfortunately, we did lose a big pot there deep into the tournament that probably cost me a lot of money. Yeah, Dividend had a full house of pocket fives here, down to 0 0.7 lines. You're such a genius, Steven! But anyways, like and subscribe because we're gonna post some more on YouTube. Catch us live over at twitch.tv at blindguy789. Peace!